name is Vivian K. I am the founder and CEO of Kinky Curly Yaki. It is a textured hair extensions for black women. I started that business back in 2012. Um, I'm a 14 year veteran of the entrepreneur game. I bootstrapped two businesses from the ground up with Kinky Curly Yaki. Um, I've been doing that for almost eight years now. Um, and that has been my, that's my e-commerce business. Um, and that's a business that I grew to over a million dollars in annual revenue um, just by figuring stuff out as I was going along. Um, so I have a wealth of experience in the e-commerce and entrepreneurial space. I have been there, I have done that, and I'm still doing it, and I got receipts. So, um, <laughs> well, that's the thing. There's a lot of people out there, um, especially because what I also do is I do uh, e-commerce coaching. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot, a lot of people are being seduced by what I call, and especially now during this time period, I call them quarantine coaches, mm. where it's these people who've just popped up, um, who are, you know, taking advantage of people with stimulus checks, people who want to, who've been laid off and want to run their own business, but they themselves have never run a business. So they're in the business of selling you how to build the business they've never run. <laughs> right. Right. And so then, you know, I strongly encourage people that if you're going to hire a coach, there's nothing that they're that these people who are showing that are that they're charging you fifteen hundred dollars or whatever uh, for. There's nothing that you can't Google. Everything is available on Google. However, yeah. what I provide is guidance. Mm -hmm. So I provide guidance. I provide feedback. I provide a sounding board because I have been through a lot, including now a pandemic. I mean, who would have thunk it, <laughs> right? But I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. So what I, so what I do is I can coach you. You know, I can teach you that a step-by-step -step for SEO or how to get more sales or all that stuff. But what I'm trying to give you is the tools and the confidence for you to be able to make your own decisions confidently. Because that's really what it is. When you're an entrepreneur, it's like, am I making the right decision? I have no clue. You right. can't go to your parents and ask, especially if they haven't been entrepreneurs or your friends, like, go, back gonna, to work. <laughs> go back, go get a job, right? So you need someone who's been there, who's done that and has got receipts that understands the situation you, that you're in and can guide you to making those proper decisions. I, I'm so glad you said that because I, you know, I've seen those coaches and things like that. And obviously you want to pay someone for their work, but you know, do your homework. Yeah. <laughs> due diligence like just the other day someone was telling me someone got ripped off for five hundred dollars by fluff mm -hmm. someone who taught them fluff it's like girl you could have googled that yeah yes and people are taking advantage of the fact that people aren't willing to google i get that if that's what you want that's fine but if you're really serious about building a sustainable business mm -hmm. and and creating generational wealth and all that do not be seduced by the marketers because that's what they are. They're just fancy marketers, right? You want to follow, you want to learn from someone who has done what you want to do. Not just make a million dollars because if your goal is to make a million dollars, then you're like, good luck with that. And even then when you get it, it's not going to, you're not going to keep it for long because you're just after the money. But if you have, if you're trying to serve a purpose, if you're trying to solve problems, if you're trying to really make a difference in this world, then you want to go and follow or be mentored or, you know, um, be coached by someone who has done what they want to do. So for me, I do e-commerce. So I have answered emails. I have shipped packages. I have, you know, I've had irate customers. I have cash flow issues. I've been market. I've done all of that. So I understand where you're coming from. But if the person you've hired has never done that, or if their business is the coaching, <laughs> yeah. Girl, they don't know what they're talking about. So, anyways, that's my little. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you passionate about this? What? <laughs> because you know what? I am, I am the opposite of what everyone expects success to look like, right? I am an immigrant. I am a college dropout. I'm a single mom. I'm a black woman. I'm, I'm all the things that I shouldn't be, and I still did it. Was it easy? No. Is it possible? Yes. But it's not, it's not, there's no step by step, there's no blueprint to it. If there was, everyone would do it. Exactly. 
Yeah, I, I feel like that's that's one of the things, you know, the whole idea of being opposite of what success looks like. That's like part of the one, that's one of the things I want to change in this mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. you know? Like that's why I have you here because you are what success looks like. And it's time for us to start changing what our mental models are telling us who gets to be successful and who gets to, you know, sit on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're going to own it. We're going to own it. We're taking it over. <laughs> it, over it looks much better. It looks much better. <laughs> I, mean, I know you've shared your story you know, multiple times across a lot of different platforms. And I mean, what really struck me is just your resilience, your ability to, you know, make things happen. And the fact that you are just so willing to kind of give and really inspire people to, to really live up to their best potential. Where do you think that came from? Honestly, I have no idea. Um, you know, I, I'm, to be honest, I haven't really, it's not like I grew up in a, a household where my parents were like, yes, you can do it. Rah, rah, rah. Mm-hmm. Um, it was more like, do you think you can do that? And so then, um, you know, I've always been, my mom was, <laughs> my mom always describes me as, you know, when she says A, I would say G. <laughs> so if, if you want me to do something, tell me I can't do it. And so, um, and I don't think it was done purposely. It was just, mm-hmm. you know, there was, there's no uh, precedent. There was no precedent in my family of people doing big and great things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just watching people around me, I'm like, well, they're, kind of mediocre but they're doing great things and people are congratulating them for it yes. so imagine if I did some stuff oh so to me it's just I'm just using my natural god-given abilities and talents and sharing that with the world and what, and what I realize is when I do that it gives other people permission to do the same mm. so really I'm just the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> That. it's actually really funny because that it's very similar I mean I I think my for my parents I mean I would just walk into my dad's office and be like daddy guess what I'm gonna do this and just be like okay Ashley <laughs> and then I'd just do it and then you know I guess I just got used to like that like skeptical like all right and then really kind of really relishing in the surprise and and delight when I actually do it to the point where you know now you know when I when I quit my job at Google my dad was like are you insane are you every parent would say that (laughs) I'm sure your friends even said it like that's just it's not people will never understand that they'll never understand your vision that yeah it's great but I'm not, I wasn't put on this earth to push a piece of paper and pencil for Google. Like that's not satisfying. And you know, not everybody's going to get that. Mm, yes. How did, I mean, how did you first encounter your vision? I didn't know what it was to be honest, because again, didn't, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm probably quite a bit older than you. So in my generation, um, you know, being an entrepreneur was for people who couldn't get jobs. Or if they were entrepreneurs, they were literally, you know, um, you know, an upholstery store and that's all they did. And they didn't really make that much money. They were living by the skin of their teeth, that type of thing. I was always that parallelogram and they were trying to fit me into this box and I couldn't quite fit because I was a parallelogram, (laughs) right? But I didn't understand why I wasn't able to fit into this box. So, you know, I went through high school being, you know, being Vivian. Um, I even won an award called the Change Your Future Award. And I'm really sure that it's really an award for people. They didn't know quite what I was going to (laughs) do. They know I was going to do something, but they, they couldn't put their name on it. So they gave me a Change Your Future Award. And so I've always been this, like this independent spirit that's always focused on what I'm good at. I was never one of those people who focused, like, and people wanted me to, they wanted me to focus on the things I was not good at. I'm like, what's the point of focusing on that? I'm not going to get better at that. I don't like doing it. So why should I even bother myself? I'm going to focus myself on the things that I like and that I enjoy. So that's what I, that's what I did. So it turns out, um, you know, I started out doing customer service and then I worked myself into being a marketing assistant and then I worked myself into being a marketing manager. Uh, and I was always, and because I was bilingual, so I speak English and French, 
um, I ended up being, I always ended up being the one person in the one person department. Right. And so then, um, so I learned to work independently, you know, so I always was, I feel like I set myself up for success without even realizing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so then, uh, I got laid off from my, my last job, which was back in, uh, 2000, April this month. So April, 2010. Um, and I was running a side, I was already running a side hustle. So I was a wedding decorator and that was a business that I also made up as I was going along. Um, and I thought, well, you know, I'm young, I have no mortgage, I have no kids, like I have no real responsibilities outside of a student loan. Um, I'm just going to go for it. What else could I have to lose? And so I went full, full on into a full-time entrepreneurship, but I haven't looked back since. And since then I bootstrapped two businesses, uh, from the ground up just by rolling up my sleeves and figuring stuff out as I go along. Wow. I mean couldn't it's one of those things where you just did it did you feel like I'm one of those people I jump off cliffs and figure out how to open the parachute as on my way down (laughs) (laughs) I'm like oh I need a parachute someone throw me a parachute cool thank you okay so how do I open this parachute oh we're getting hit close to the ground okay so I'm gonna open up another so it's open okay boom hit the ground (laughs) Hmm. okay let me go up again (laughs) now I have this parachute Yes. Let me jump off. I'm not going to bother to read the instructions. I'm going to just look at the, the, the YouTube instructional video. <laughs> oh, okay, that looks about right. And jump off the cliff again. You know, and usually when I'm going down that, I'm going down, you know, I'm in the air, you know, the right wind hits me mm-hmm. and it carries me off into the sunset, right? Yeah. And so I always jump with the best, like, you know, hoping for the best. And even if I land in a pile of mud, Okay, well, it's mud. Mud comes off. I'll brush it off, wash it off, and I'll try again. That makes complete sense. I mean, I think that that, like, just having, just having, like, not being afraid of failure or knowing that, you know, failure, like mud, yeah, it'll get on you and might hurt a little bit, but, you know, did you die? I like to say that shit is manure. So let's just say, you know, I jumped off the cliff and I landed in a pile. I wanted to say shit, but I wasn't sure if I could say that. But I said, um, you know, I jumped off the, the cliff and I'm landing in shit. Uh-huh. Well, you know what? Shit, it smells, it's all over the place, whatever. But you know what? Shit is also manure. Yes. And you use it to put, you put it in plant, you, you know, you plant stuff with it. It makes plants thrive and flourish and grow. That is what you should do with any sort of uh, adversities that you come across and, and obstacles that you come across in life. Think of it as manure. Manure helps you grow. So you wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be as resilient as I am or as strong or as bold or anything that I am if I had not gone through shit and come out the other side. Mm. So when you think about just, you know, Moving forward, navigating uncertainty. I mean, what are the things that you're thinking about right now when it comes to, you know, owning and maintaining a business and, you know, you know keeping yourself, you know, healthy, things like that? Well, this is, this has been a pretty challenging time. And, um, you know, I'm going to be honest with you at the beginning, I sort of struggled because nobody else has gone through a pandemic, right? In our lifetime. Um, and, and to be all, and you know, honestly, that's what also what makes me feel better because I'm not the only person going through it. So before, when I was going through my own personal issues, you know, I really felt alone and lonely. Um, and you know, it felt like nobody understood. Whereas now everybody understands, <laughs> right? And so that gives me, that gives me a bit of comfort, but, um, you know, I've really just taken this time to just sort of reevaluate, um, what it is that I want to do and how I plan to do it. Um, And, you know, especially during this time, I've been telling my audience that, you know, you either have to be a resource or a relief, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is, there's no right or wrong way to be going about, you know, what's happening right now or how how to feel. Mm -hmm. But, 
you don't, I, you, this is a time that people will be telling, we'll be telling our grandchildren about this time, yes. right? And what I want people to remember me or how to remember me is that she made me feel better when I felt like this was over. Like when I was feeling sad and lonely and depressed and, you know, she just gave me that little bit of relief or respite or respite or, you know, light that I needed during this pretty crazy time. So I just find, I find joy in that. And then, you know, when I'm not okay, I'm not okay. And I'm okay with that. Yes. And, <laughs> right. And it's okay not to be okay. Um, so I just, I'm just riding the wave. Yeah. Just riding the wave. I, I, I feel that, you know, I think that, I mean, you know, I'm in the United States and, uh, you know, things are, <laughs> they're interesting. And I think I, I got to the or in the very beginning, like I would just be looking at the newspaper, figuring out like, oh, okay, I need to find hand sanitizer. And then like trying to find this or, oh, I need, like, if I get a fever, I need Tylenol and then trying to find this. And it's just like, it got to a point where, you know, weeks have passed and it's just like, okay, <laughs> I, I can't. I've got a surplus of Tylenol. <laughs> no, it took like two months to get Tylenol, but. Oh. Um, well, it took like, five weeks but um it's a long time it got, i know yeah it's like it kind of feels like you're like it's every every man for themselves right now which is just doesn't really feel great um but i did get to you know a couple of weeks in i'm just like all right you know what i'm going to have to just accept that this is going to be a journey it's going it's not going to be fixed next week um, and we don't know when it's going to be fixed. So I need to be, figure out how to find peace and keep going despite, you know, the uncertainty and what's going on. And I mean, I think that, I mean, that translates into business, that translates into life, that yep. translates into relationships. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, yeah, I think we've all sort of gone through this, I guess, the grieving process right? Where it's like, um, you know, the five stages of grieving. And now it's like, okay, now we're, okay, now what? What are the next steps? Because this is, this is, I hate to say the new normal, but this is going to be the new normal. Mm. Um, yeah. Life has changed as we know it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, they did in 1917 or I think. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah, you know, back before they had anything. Yeah. yeah. And look at us now in 2020. I, I mean, know. It, eventually, you know, life will look amazing. Um, so. I hope so. I miss people. I do too. <laughs> I was actually, I just called my friend and I was like, you know what? I just miss just going to your house, you know? <laughs> uh, so when it comes to, you know, building your business and building building your brand. I mean, what are some things that you see that people really underestimate? Um, I think people don't, not that they underestimate, but they don't understand who they're talking to. Mm. Um, so a lot of people just, and I'll speak specifically for like, you know, a, as a product business, they seem to think that, okay, I'm going to create a product and people will come. Uh -huh. That's not the way it works. Um, usually you need to find out what people need. So make sure um, that you're solving a problem. You're solving a pain point. Ideally, you're solving an issue or pain in your own life because then you can, you're, you'll be really interested in it, right? So people make the mistake of, oh, well, so-and-so made money at that. So I'm going to go do that business too. Mm -hmm. That's not the way you should do it. Solve your own problem make sure that there isn't that if there are um you know see who else is also solving the problem in the marketplace if you do find them find out what they're not doing because there's always a gap somewhere right so like let's just say um i remember i had this one girl who wanted to sell hair extensions mm -hmm. and she's like well what should i do you know i'm not getting traction and all that and i'm like okay well, what do you sell she sells um, she was also selling natural textured hair extensions. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you know, there's a lot of people now doing that because yeah. at the time when I started, there wasn't, I'm the OG of the niche. Right. Yeah. And so then, um, I said, well, you know what? I just stopped selling wigs and these are the, and this is the reason why these are the reasons hmm. why I stopped selling wigs. So, and I'm basically giving her her business to do like, this is the reason <laughs> why I stopped selling wigs. 
this is why you should do it. <laughs> but she didn't, like, she, she, she was like, oh, okay, that's great. And then still proceeded to do whatever she was doing. And it's like, girl, I'm giving you the audience. So what I said was, I stopped selling wigs because um, there was too much of a learning curve for wigs. Everyone, a lot of customers seemed to think they needed to do the whole, you know, lace glue, gel down baby hairs thing, right? <laughs> when I don't even wear my wigs like that. But the way I wear my wigs, I, I, I literally just color the underside, I pluck it randomly with tweezers, I color the underside with a furniture marker and call it a day. I don't bother with the blending. I sit it, you know, I sit it a little bit back so it, but that's not a sexy thing to show customers, mm. right? So, um, so then I decided not to move forward with them. So here's your opportunity, since you know how to do it properly, because I can't be bothered. Here's right. your opportunity to just focus on natural textured wigs. Mm -hmm. Is she doing that? No. Because she feels like it's too narrow a group of people. And I'm like, but that's how I got started. Really, you use a niche, a niche, it's, you guys say niche. <laughs> I say niche. Um, but niche. Niche. I say it's niche, but it's apparently the proper pronunciation is niche. Oh. And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Um, but, you know, the niche, sorry, the niche um, when you focus on a very specific group of people and you solve their problem, guess what? They become your most loyal customers. They mm -hmm. will tell everybody about you and you'll be easier to find in the sea of other hair extension companies, right? But if you just want to become just another hair extension company, guess what, girl? You're in competition with 20,000 other businesses, right? But if you, and then when you focus on a very specific group of people and you solve a very specific problem, you're able to create marketing collateral, showing people the benefits of your product, how you're solving that problem. And it becomes a no brainer for someone who's looking for it. Right? right. So that's the mistake that people are making. It's that they think that, Oh, well, I have to go, I have to go wide in order to, to you know, to get my audience. Amazon started out as a bookseller right here. Yes. Right here. They started out selling books. Once they got really, really, really good at selling books, mm -hmm. then they started to expand. Same thing with Walmart. All of these companies started out doing one thing. You use a niche to get your foot in the door to go, and then you go deep. Once you've got, once you're so well known for being that, then you can go a little bit wider, right? So like now at my point, I can start to sell hair products. Why? Because I have a reputation. I have a really good reputation at selling hair. So now if I sell hair products, it makes sense. My customer is going to be like, yeah, girl, I want that because you already proved you were really good at selling hair, right? Even if I was to start to sell, I don't know, men's wigs. Hey. No, but I, see, now I can start to go wide. So if you start narrow, mm -hmm. then go wide. So people underestimate the power of a niche and then uh, on top of that, you know, it's like, it's like creating a Sunday. So you've got your, you know, you've got your business. That's the ice cream. A niche is like a topping. Another topping would be brand, right? So now brand is about, um, you know, it's a set of emotions. It's because what people don't, people don't necessarily buy product. They buy the emotions behind the product, right? right? So like if I, if you can sell a product that you demonstrate to me, oh, Vivian, it will make your life easier in five minutes. You can get up and feel confident in the morning. Da, 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 da. I won't care how much it is because you're, you're appealing to my emotions. That's what I want. That's what I'm buying. Right. right? Um, so when you focus on brand, if you put, you've got your business and then you've got, you've got niche, you've got your brand and it's a clean story. And listen, it's not meant to appeal to everybody. Yes. Right. It's not meant to. And if it is, then th that's why you're not making any money. But once you have that and on, on top of that, a great product, like you just, that's, that's, you've got gold right there. Mm. Yeah. That reminds me of, you know, when, you're, when you're trying to sell to everybody, then you're not you're selling to nobody. Exactly. Something that I saw that you posted on Instagram once is just like, just telling people to just start, yes. you know, like, out list like listing all the excuses like mm -hmm. oh the website's not right oh I don't have this and you said just start why do you have that you know such conviction and why do you think people are so afraid to do that 
Because people are so afraid of failing. Mm. Failure is not a bad thing. Um, you know, it's not a bad thing. And I think what happens is that people get so caught up mm-hmm. in making things perfect. And it's like, but if you're so busy making, girl, nothing will ever be perfect. No. And in fact, what's that saying? If you want to make a plan, if you want to hear God laugh, make a plan. So you can make a plan to the teeth, mm-hmm. right? And if one thing goes wrong, so you're going to stop, right? that doesn't make any sense, right? So you have to be able to just start. And you don't even, and people think they got to go big or go home. Girl, you ain't got to just take one step. Like, you know, <laughs> just, if you think about it, it's like being, running a business or being an entrepreneur is like running a marathon. Mm-hmm. it's not a sprint. You're not going to get from, you're not going to get that, do that 400 meters and think you're going to be done. No girl, it's, it's a 32 mile sprint, you, a marathon you got to do. Mm-hmm. Right. So what's the first thing you got to do when you got to do a marathon? You have to get out of your bed. Yes. Then you have to put on shoes. Then you have to tie your shoes. Then you have to, you know, like there's all these little steps, but guess what? All those little steps add up. And then you get to that finish line. And then you're like, how did I get to that finish line? Well, you couldn't have got to that finish line unless you got out of bed. Yes. Absolutely. I, you know what? You're so right. And I hear, you know, a chorus of people just being like, but, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, eight months and I haven't sold anything yet. Or I've been doing this for a year. Girl, have you really been doing it? Mm. have you really been doing it because that's the thing a lot of people are like oh well I was doing it. and it's like okay so what have you been doing well I posted this once and no one said anything do you know how many times you have to it's like a child you can say pick that up once they won't do it you have to say it repeatedly mm-hmm. and so that's people and people's attention spans it's like eight seconds nowadays yes you have to constantly tell people about something in order for it to finally catch on Right. So if you can't get high on your own supply, like if you can't be that person that's always talking about your product, Mm -hmm. why would you expect anyone to buy it? Yes. Right. And even then you have to give your business or anything like, no, okay, not anything. It's not, I wouldn't say a relationship, but you know, (laughs) give it at least 12 to 18 months and make sure you really are trying everything. Don't be doing it that. And that's the thing. People say, oh, well, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay motivated? Motivation is fleeting. Motivation is dependent on your feelings and how you feel and your emotions that day. Girl, there are days like this morning, I didn't want to sit here and do this call. No, didn't want to do it because I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. But I want to be consistent. I said, I promised that I would do this. So I'm going to do it. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to show up properly. I'll fall apart after I'm done. <laughs> right? But it's it's discipline, it's consistency. That is what a lot of people are lacking in the entrepreneurial space because they saw some sexy Instagram story where the girl's stunting with her Gucci and Louis Vuittons and Lamborghini and her boyfriend and she made sixty thousand dollars in a day. How come you can't do it? Girl, you don't know her backstory. You don't know how many steps she had to take to get there. Mm-hmm. Right. So you, in, but in order to get to that Gucci purse, you got to start with the Walmart purse. You got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the Goodwill purse. The like, Goodwill purse, the <laughs> mama's purse, whatever. You just, you have to, you got to start somewhere. Maybe she didn't just pick up a Gucci one day and be done. And if she did, then she's not telling you the whole story. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And that Lamborghini could be rented rented <laughs> the shoes could be she could have just painted the red on the bottom of the shoes the gucci could have just she just probably teeth the logo slapped it on with a google you don't know you don't know you can't compare your journey to anyone else's journey your story is meant for you how you get it done is how you will get it done hmm. if you want to follow in someone's footsteps you are doing yourself a huge disservice because now you're not having you don't have your own journey you don't have your, you're not building your own set of resistance and uh, resilience and your own strength and your own, je ne, yeah, that strength and, you know, that je ne sais quoi, that yeah. people just, oh yeah, that, that, that resonates with me. Mm-hmm. But if you're just following what she's doing, girl, you're not, you're no, that's not special. Nobody wants to hear that story. No, no. no. 
and once you're doing it, like do it. One of the things you told me in the little focus group is like wear your product and actually- get high <laughs> on your own supply. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So like I'm taking that advice. Mm-hmm. I'm trying. But you uh, have to because nobody's like you are your own best customer. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you expect people to you know, to buy and to, you know, be loyal, you have to be loyal to yourself. Yes, absolutely. I really appreciate that because I, it's one of those things where I feel like there's, you know, people here all the time and they're like, yeah, 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 I know, but then they don't do it. So it's just like, okay, but there's still a disconnect between what you know and what you do. So what are you going to do to address that? It's just really, honestly, it's not like I woke up positive. I've been through some strife. I've been through depression. I've been through broke times and hard times and rich times. I've been through it all. Mm -hmm. But the difference is every single time I've been put down, I got back up. Sometimes I got back up slowly. Sometimes I got back up injured. Sometimes I just lay there an extra couple of days or years or whatever it was, right? But the point is, is I still got back up. I would hate to live this life knowing that I didn't live it my best. If I didn't give it my all, if I didn't try. And if I fail, okay, well, I failed. So what? Who, who, who gonna check me, boo? Yeah. Still here. Still here. You gonna, you gonna, what? You gonna come laugh at me at my failures? What have you done? At least I tried. Mm-hmm. Right. So hmm. <laughs> better late than never. I love it. I'm I, full of cliches today. <laughs> hey, but you picked the best one. Yes. <laughs> no, I really appreciate it. I mean, you've given us so much to really think about and really connect with our, what we know and what we do. You know, mm. all those things. I love it. I love it. Shit becomes manure. Shit is manure. <laughs> shit is manure. It's manure. All this shit, man. You know how much stronger you went, we're going to come out? Yeah. It's like, man, it's really bad now, but guess I, I'm, I'm very excited to see like how this helps me grow, how this helps me really become better. You mm-hmm. know, I, I really mm-hmm. appreciate you really helping us reframe that. No, yeah, well, you're absolutely welcome. I didn't know it'd be a pandemic, but yeah. <laughs> a whole bunch of it. Just yeah. a whole bunch of manure. Just a whole bunch of manure. <laughs> like a cow exploded. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a little bit feels like that, but you know, mm-hmm. we'll we'll work with it. You know, is there anything that we missed in this conversation? Anything that you you would love to have, you know talked about, or would love to kind of tell people who are you know primarily my audience is within the eighteen to thirty four um, kind of age bracket, and I mean they're very ambitious people, mm-hmm. um, and I think that they're you know they're just trying to figure things out, so. It's cool. Well, I, I want to say it's just, it's okay to figure stuff out. It's okay to still be figuring it out. Girl, if at 18, if you know exactly what you want to do, good for you, but yeah. you're allowed to change your mind. <laughs> I am 42 and I still, every other day I'm like, do I really want to be doing this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So that's okay. That's a part of life. That's just human nature. So don't be afraid of that. Um, and also to take take chance, take smart risks. Now I'm not saying, you know, go be with that dude that you know is no good. Don't do that. No. But if it's something that um, doesn't affect anyone else and is, you know, um, would do, you know, if it turns out good, then it's good. And if it turns out bad, it's not terrible. It's just, oh, okay, then do it. Mm-hmm. Just do it. There's like, just do it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to start. And by starting, I like I said, you just need to put on, get off the couch, get out of bed, put on your shoes, tie your shoelaces, put your pants on, put your bra on, put a ponytail on, whatever you gotta do. You just gotta start. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. And don't don't be afraid to start small. There's no shame in that. There's no sh- like how I started my business was with one bundle of hair. Mm. I started with one bundle of hair, someone would buy some, and I would take that money and I would buy two. Wow. 
And then that's how I slowly built my business. I built, I went from my, I went from a Rubbermaid bin in my apartment, the corner of my apartment to bookshelves in my apartment, then moved it to my parents' basement then moved it, then bought a house, moved it to my basement, and then moved into a thousand square foot warehouse. All of that over the space of seven years, right? So um, have I made mistakes along the way? Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Do I regret some of them? Uh-huh. <laughs> but does it make me a stronger, more resilient, more, and, and I'm able to teach you and tell you the mistakes that I made and how you can avoid them? Absolutely. And I, and that's what I, that's what I live for. So for me, even with hair, the ponytails and hair extensions, my passion isn't about hair. I could give two kicks about hair. Mm. My passion is in giving people, especially black women, the confidence to show up as themselves in the world and to help other black women do it too. So whether that be with my hair extensions or whether that be with e-commerce coaching, I just want everyone to be the best people that they can be. And that's it. So do that and do that for your sister, do it for your brother, do it for the people who, if you just want to make the world a better place, then take a look at yourself and make that change. Yes, I just <laughs> quoted a Michael Jackson song. Change. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, just girl, do it. Just, and don't worry if you're 18, don't worry about boys. They'll be there. Trust me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're 35, they ain't going nowhere either. <laughs> no. I was thinking about that. I was like, yeah, when I was 18, I wanted to be editor in chief of 17 magazine. That was like oh. my thing. And it's like, you know, I've had like five different careers since then. So. That's fine. And that's, you know what? And that's okay. Cause now at least, you know, if, if you, if you were to be on your bed, you know, if you were to have to go tomorrow, you can at least say, I lived a good life great life. And that's all that matters. Mm-hmm.